scalar if I multiply the whole thing by 3, do it in your calc. This guy, I need to see right now. Question? Those of you that are going to see this, can you do this? Same thing here. It's going to result in a 3 by 2. So notice, this time around, I take my row. I do one column. I'm in my first row. I take my row. I do the second column. Doesn't that make me get two sections here? Isn't that the two of my 3 by 2? I got three rows. Isn't this my row? So it, it flows in a pattern. That's why for the amount of time that you have to do this, this is, God bless you, this is the best way to do this. So you can see your mistake immediately. If I multiply this, because it's you're, you're dealing with a lot of numbers. So say I multiply this and I multiply this guy, but for some odd reason I put a 10 in here. As soon as I look at this, I'm going to say, oh, this guy's off. I can tell right away this guy's off. He should be a negative 6. So I'll know right away where my problem is. It, it just kind of stands out at you. And again, check them in your calc. Watch your negative signs. That's another one that messes up at me. And this probably, the next one is probably the biggest one that you'll probably see. This was a lot. It was a four, uh, it resulted in a three by three again, because you're, you're doing the three parts this way, three rows that way. This one was probably a little bit bigger. that you can do this because on the test you're definitely going to have one of these. You have to be able to do these by hand. This one, we go to multiply and we find out the middles don't match up. This is undefined. How do you do this? That one you can't do. No, in general. Oh, the next part? Wait, okay, the next part. Is that okay with 50? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm like, uh-oh. Okay, hang on, let's look at the next part. Your directions, what do your directions say? What, what kind? Coefficient, augmented, what does it say? Matrices. Okay, so when, when they do, when we do an X and a Y, they just subscript to an X1, X2. Most times you see matrix, they subscript X1, X2. We happen to use X, Y, Z, Z, but most of the time you see a matrix, they subscript. So the first part, they just took out the coefficients of their subscript. So A, I'm just taking out the, the coefficients. Negative 1, positive 1. Negative 2, positive 1. This right here is this guy, B. Now, I have to solve this. I have to get a solution. So I put this whole thing, my augmented matrix, this, is, this means the whole thing. This means your variables and your constant go in here. And we do RREF, we find the solution. We need to find out what is X1, what is X2. So in this case, this is X1, X2. X1 is on, it's a 4. X2 is on, it's an 8. I know this. So I come back to this equation. So now, if I take this, A, and I times it by this, the answer, I will get B, this guy. That's a 2 by 2, and that's 2 by 1. So I should end up with a 2 by 1, which is my B. Not that something we would use, but it's just to show you that there are other things you can do with matrices. Um, we don't really use this that often because, to me, it's kind of useless. You have to solve it anyway. But just to see that you can 
play with it. We're going to see a lot with inverses too. Um, if we're doing something on the test, like not specifically like this problem, but if we have to use the R R D S C one to like print it out how we wrote it out, or do we just like print this out? So like you know how you have that and then you have R R D S. Yeah. We just print the next one. Yeah. Can you? you know, the, so yes. The only reason why I like you to do that is because of this. When you put your matrix in. If you make a mistake putting your matrix in, that's why I always tell you, especially on the test, I want you to print it back out on your calculator. Because if you make a mistake, you don't see it, I don't see it, and then you say, I put this in, this is what I did, I did RREF, but I, I, I don't see it either. So if you show me what you put in, print it back out, write it down, show me you did RREF, if there's a mistake, then it's somewhere else. It's not in your process. This, it's, it's, so matrix are very hard. Like when you add two matrices together, it's, I don't see what you're adding. You know, I don't see the matrix you put in. I don't know if you put it in wrong. You don't know if you put it in wrong. The next thing you do is write right over it. You know what I'm saying? So like on the homework, that's fine. It, it, it's like, oh, I, I thought I put this in right. Then I'll try it again. I'll do it now. I must have put something in wrong. On a test, since you're only answering like five, six questions, I would always put my matrix in go to matrix, print it out, and make sure I have those numbers. Because once you do the next one, that's done. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I, I get no work, I don't see the work, and you say, but I knew what I did. So just show me what you did. That's all I'm really saying. Show us what you did. Um, I wouldn't even test you on this. I don't think I've tested you on this at all. I, I, I won't. Because it's just another way for you to um, look at this. Um, it works this way for all of these guys. This is the same as your X, Y, Z, but most colleges, they will subscript X1, X2. Everybody knows the subscript, right? X1, X2, X3. It's just a placeholder, like this placeholder is a zero. Pull out your coefficients. These are just where your coefficients are for your variables. This is called the constant. This one's going to go out by itself. That's your B. Then you're going to, your solution's going to go in a separate one so that when we multiply this times this, we get this. Just to show you that things work out there, there's other ways of looking at it. Does it make sense? another way to look at it. Like today when we do inverses, you're going to see different things that we do inverses for. Unfortunately, we don't do a lot with them. We do solve a matrix, uh, a systems of equations using an inverse. Wouldn't be my favorite choice, but we'll, we'll look at how we do them and I'm sure you'll find more uses if you ever use this in college. And if you use this in college, chances are you're subscripting. The book that I use uses both. It uses X, Y's, and Z's, and it uses subscripts. Okay, these guys, you had to tell me if you could do these or not. So just look at your dimensions. When you're adding, they have to be the same dimension. Scale and multiplication, you're multiplying by a number. That one doesn't matter. When you're multiplying, follow the rules. So the first one says A plus B. And yes, A plus B is exactly the same. You can multiply anything by a scalar. It doesn't change your dimension. This, and again, this is where you could regroup if you wanted to. You could take your scalar times A, or you could take A times B times your scalar. And that you wouldn't be able to do anyway because A and B didn't let you multiply. Okay. These guys... I guess you didn't have one of these in your homework, right? I don't know where this came from. Is that it? Oh, no. Uh-oh. I don't know where this stuff came from. That's what I did with you yesterday, but I don't know where that came from. Okay. Must be a square matrix. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will have an inverse, but it must be a square to start with. Now, this guy right here, Here's my matrix. This guy right here is called <coughs> God bless you. Identity matrix. 
notice what it looks like. I, I have my series of ones, my diagonal ones, everything else has a zero in it. That's called an identity matrix. Now, when we take your matrix and we multiply A times B, well, let me just call this A. This is A, let me just call this B. It's called an inverse, so I'm just going to call it B. When we multiply this, an identity number when you multiply, if I multiply 3 by something, I get three, right? So what is my identity element for multiplication? One. So this guy, when I so when I multiply it by a one, I get itself right back, right? So this guy is my identity matrix. If I multiply this matrix by that, I get the same thing. I should get matrix A. Just like we did here. Three times one is three. This is like my one, if you will. So I put them in my calculator already. Here's my matrix. I put them in my matrix. Okay, in A, I put this guy. There's my A. And in B, I put my identity. Here's my B. So this is what I would do if I was taking a test after I put it in. I would print it out and make sure that's what I have. And that's what I would write on my paper to tell me what you put in. So I put these two in, and all I have to do now is multiply these. So I'm going to take A, just click on A. You don't even have to put a times in there. Just click on B. And when I do this, because that's my identity, I should come out with A. And I do. I come out with the original one. That's my identity matrix. It's just a diagonal of one. Everything else has a zero in it. Okay. Now, if I took, um, if I took this guy. If I want to find my inverse matrix, let's do this first, since I have them here. I think I did put this in my calculator. If I want to find my inverse matrix, and we don't calculate them by hand, we use, your, we use your matrix. All we have to do is this. Click on the matrix, click on the one we want to take the inverse of, and inverse, when a second sign, second cosine, you get that little negative one up there. F to the negative 1 is how we write your function inverse, right? We look for to the negative 1. So we look for this guy. Oops. I hate this calculator. So if we do this, this denotes an inverse. So when we put this in, we get our inverse. And it's messy looking, so I'm going to flip it back to a fraction. And this is my inverse matrix. Now, if I take my inverse matrix and I multiply it by this, get back to math. What do I have to multiply this guy to get one? One third. Isn't this its reciprocal? Technically like it's inverse. So if I took this one, it's inverse, and I multiply it by the original, I would get my identity matrix. I would get my one. This is considered your one in a matrix. Okay? So if I took this, and I don't have to put this in my matrix, all I have to do is this. Click on A, multiply it by its inverse, I hate this calculator. If I do this and I multiply the inverse times A, I should get that identity thing, which is R1. So I did this and I didn't get the identity thing. This, this is your calculator. It means zero. See this E? This is your scientific notation number. So this means a zero. So technically, this is my identity. Sometimes your calculator does weird things. <clears throat> you know, like when you're doing your 
finding your intercepts or you're doing your mid your your vertex points or your zeros, they give you these weird things. Unfortunately they do live in a matrix too. But this guy is the same as your zero. So if I put a zero in here, there's my identity. See the diagonal? And everything else is zero. So what we do in math works the same as what we do with the matrix. It just looks a little bit different. Okay? Um, just a couple of definitions. Do you really have to know these? But I've put them out there. So just in case you wanted to remember what they are. Uh, we have invertible matrices. They have inverses. We have a singular matrix, which means I cannot make an inverse out of it. We have a non-square. Non-squares do not even attempt to find an, in an inverse. And to have an inverse, we first have to start out with a square. There are inverse, there are matrices that don't have an inverse. And I'm going to flip to that one first. I'll put that in my calculator. So. If you, oh, I can't show you that yet. Okay. All right. Now, prove that two matrices are inverses of each other. Let's think for a minute. You had an equation of whatever this was. Then you had this equation. It's inverse. When I did this, what did it become? It's an identity. This was the identity. This became your line y equals x. Remember when we did these? We did compositions of functions. We had to do them both ways. We had to do both of these both ways to show that they both came down to y equals x, right? So an inverse has the same kind of thing. If we multiply these together, this should give me my identity inverse. Okay, we can also take the inverses and do the inverses of each one. No. If we multiply these together, this is this. This is this. Remember we had to do these both ways? We have to do these both ways. I'm just having a hard time on explaining this and, and aligning it to your regular inverses. Because they, they don't really line up. They don't have the same thing, but the concept of the inverse is the same. The concept is, remember when we take it and we do a composition? There's no compositions in this. But this works like this. If you do A times B and D times A, they have to be the same thing. So I put these in my couch. I think they're C and blah. So that you guys didn't have to do this. I put this in a red. I'll just make sure this fits. So this is this one. Okay? Just follow me up here. This guy is D in mine. So I put this in, this is my C, this is my D. So let me just click on this, it's easier to show you. C times D. Okay, there's my identity, true? And I have to make sure I do it the other way too. I have to go both ways. D, I have to do it both ways, just like you did your two compositions of functions. D times D. This is going to give me the same situation. If it doesn't, then they are not true inverses of each other. It could work one way and not the other, just like our inverses do. Very rare, but it could happen. So when you're going to find an inverse, you're going to see that when you multiply them, they give you the identity. This is called our identity matrix. The series of bits. Okay? Like our multiplying by one. But you have to check both ways. You have to prove it both ways. Another way to do this is you could take this guy and do its inverse. So if I went to my matrix C and I did an inverse on this matrix, it should come out to be B. Isn't it B? So that's another way I could do this. If I took 
this matrix, this one here, I plug my D, and I did its inverse, what would it come out to be? In your A or, or my C, right? That's another way you can look at inverses. Um, do we really use a lot of these for us? No, but it's just so that we show you what, what a matrix can do. I'm sure like in, in the future, we, we, do, we do solve systems of equations with an inverse. But, and well, I'll show you that today. But we don't do a lot of major work with your inverse. But an inverse has a lot of potential. So just so that you kind of get to see this a little bit. And kind of think back to math with your inverses, what happens when we do inverses. If the same concept is there, of course it's just a little different because it's a matrix. Are we okay with this? Not until you go to try it will you kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes they don't have a matrix. They don't have a square. It, has, it, it won't have an inverse. So if I did this guy, I think I put this in my calculator too. Much better that I had them all in here, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I do this one, and I click on this, and I say negative 1, I get, an, I get a matrix. But... For me to know that this is a matrix, that this is its inverse, I have to say e and e to the negative one. Does this come out to be my identity matrix? Yes. Oh, this one has a matrix. This one doesn't have a matrix. This one I didn't put in. Sorry. This is a different, I put that one in. I don't know why that's over there. It should be this one that I didn't put this one in. If you do this and do a, a regular matrix, this one won't. It, it, will tell, it won't give you an identity matrix. So, sorry I didn't put that one in. So not all inverse, not all matrices have inverses. Okay, so let's get to the, the juicy part of this. How do I use this? to solve the systems of equations. I thought I was doing so good putting this all in. I don't have this one in either. Okay. We have a few minutes that we can get. Inverses are nice to solve your systems of equations as well. So you're going to take this guy out, and this is where you're going to see your coefficient one. We're going to take this guy out. These are your coefficients. Why are these called your coefficients matrix? The coefficients of all your variables. Right? This one is our constant. That's our constant matrix. Okay, so they put this in one way, and they find an inverse. I didn't put this one in my calculator, so you'll have to just work with me on this one. But it's the same concept. <coughs> we put this guy in, put this in one, we find its inverse. Now, if we take this inverse, not this guy, this inverse, which is this, and we multiply it by this guy, okay, we should get your solution. So you guys try that. Put this in your calculator in A. Put this in your calculator in B. And then I want you to do this. A to the negative 1, use its inverse, times your constant matrix. This should give you your answer. This guy is a 3 by 3. This guy is a 3 by 1. So am I allowed to multiply them? Yes, and what will my resulting matrix be? A 3 by 1, which will give me my X, my Y, my Z. You guys can do as fast as on my calculator. Okay. 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 Why do you multiply the 
Oh, I'm not. We're multiplying the inverse of that times this. Because that's what an inverse allows us to do to solve a system of equation. It's one of those things that your calculator can do. It can take this original matrix. We can't unless we use its inverse. So we talked about how we found an inverse. That's why there are, there are many, many ways to solve systems of equations. This is one of them. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about two more. So we're going to talk about determinants, which your calculator is wonderful for. And we're going to also talk about Kramer's rule, which is another way to solve a system of equations. But all this today was really to get to this. Because I have to explain what an inverse is. Um, this is what we're mostly going to use this for. You will use inverses for many things. There are many, many different ways to use inverses. But we take your coefficients out of here. We take your constants out of here. And all we have to do is say a to the negative 1 times b. And we get your answers. So what was your answers? So therefore, x is 2, y is negative 1, and z is 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Thank you. Nice way, right? I mean, could as, as opposed to, could we put this all in 1 and do r, r, e, s? Absolutely. So this is the second way you found to solve the systems of equations using an inverse. I had to have a very long-winded way to get to the inverses, but this is where we use inverses for. And do you have to print out this inverse matrix? No. All you have to do is say this, times B. And this will give you your result, your X. That's what we were getting at all through this long-winded presentation here. Um, because it's hard to explain this without explaining to you